guys, and welcome to Little Player Fucking Know What Time It Is. Uh, back with a part two. Um, if you guys watched part one of the Bethel situation, I'm drinking down another situation uh, situation down um, here where they're talking about the culture of honor. Now, the reason why I'm breaking this down um, is because actually I've been doing some, uh, you know, videos around different churches. Uh, very specific churches that I've spoken about, or I should say uh, specific people in the body of Christ. Um, and one of the things that have been always said is this culture of honor and the, 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 the theology of the Bethel, as the guy is talking about, is dominion theory, seven mountain theory, taking over, um, or we call it new apostolic reformation. Yeah, theology. I want you to listen to this because I've heard this um, from certain preachers, being uh, Toby, Toby and Tommy uh, and Romy from Light London. I've heard them talk about this honour culture, yeah? And we're going to have to break this down. I'll probably do a more in-depth um, video around it, but we're talking about this honour culture. I want to press play, let you listen to it, and you make your own decision up. Something that you mentioned about a culture of honour, I mean, yes. this doesn't seem to have anything to do with honour, that you would come over from... California oh, yeah, no, uh, yeah. to England and have an affair with an elder's wife. Yeah. That's, that's very dishonouring, obviously. Um, what, what is the culture of honour? The culture of honour, what it pretty much creates um, in in a church, in a congregation, is uh, it, it, it equates honour with accepting what you're being taught. And not questioning. So if you if you question or challenge the pastor, apostle, prophet, whatever, then you're being dishonouring. Yeah. So it's about uh, co compliance. It's about. So as you heard quite clearly, I'm gonna I'm gonna play it on a bit more. But as you heard quite clearly, oh, first of all, guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, share, subscribe, click on the bell button for a notification of the uploads. And for those of you who are returnees, you got the minerals. Um, so as you hear very quick correctly as well, you will hear this kind of teaching, um, a new apostolic reformation, dominion theology, where there is prophets and apostles. They will talk about this particular thing of honor culture there needs to be honor culture i said look when 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 christ is not the sole focus and man is what happens is people try to take advantage of the people and they try to do touch not my anointed OK, now you would have heard this honor culture being spoken of. And I'm keen to tell you, listen, look, this honor culture is devilish because all it does, it, do it begins to um, set a precedence where people can't question what you teach, what you do, what you say. They can't question it. Do you understand? And so what we're seeing here right now is as obviously the fact that um, what we're seeing right here right now is, uh, you know, is him explaining this honor culture and how it's used to abuse people. Compliance and yeah, exactly. And basically mind control. Yeah, that's um, cult, that's cult like. Yes. It's the cult of honor. Don't, yeah. Don't uh, don't question the authority. Right. Um, uh, no, that's not in the Bible. I mean, it, it does talk not, in Romans 13 about. Um, following the laws, it's it's honoring your mother and father, but you don't accept false teachings. You no. be like a Berean and you compare everything to scripture. Right. This is really um, troubling, Oscar. Yeah, it is. It is. So let's just let me just give you a few scriptures. One John four verse one says, "Beloved, do not do not believe every spirit." But test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. First Thessalonians 5 verse 21. But test everything, hold fast what is good. 1 John 4 verse 12. But this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is from God. 1 John, uh, um, Acts um, 7, 17 verse 10 to 11. The brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away. Uh, by night to Berea, and when they arrived, went to, to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Do you understand? So you have to understand that we are to test every spirit and the words that come out of people's mouth. We are not to be robots and obey just because you said so. God doesn't even do that to us. 
So we're supposed to test these things. Whenever you hear someone say um, it's dishonoring or it's, this is not honor to do this way, etc., etc., what they're talking about is the control because they believe that being an apostle or prophet is about controlling people, right? Um, and we 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 want to we want to we want to we want to break that. Listen, we understand that you have we understand that. Listen, respecting um, uh, you know those who are leaders over us, respecting those who are leading the charge, we understand that. But we don't have to sit under false teaching and accept it. No, 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 no. We don't have to. And, and of course, I, I didn't really spot it. It's only looking back, you know, that I see that this was foundational for what for everything else that then came in, you know, that we all then accepted. Wow. Um, this nonsense teaching. Um, and, um, you know, it, it, it kind of... Uh, it really created not a culture of honour, mm -hmm. um, but actually a culture of um, like secret conversations, um, where if you had a if you had a problem with anything going on in the church, you had to keep it either to yourself or you would develop little little groups of people that you could trust to not tell on you, <laughs> you know. So, you know, I, 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 um, I had people who would come to me and say that I'm the only person that they can speak to about their concerns, mm. to do with, you know, about the church, about what's being taught or, you know, the direction that things are going. Um, and they dare not speak to the pastor. Um, wow. There's also this kind of arsenal of, like, um, uh, like insults and uh, consequences uh, for people who do question, um, you know, so, so simple things like, um, you know, oh, you've got a religious spirit, you know, um, you're, you're, you're divisive, you're critical, you have a critical spirit, you're, um, you have a spirit, a spirit of Jezebel or, mm. you know, uh, that, that kind of stuff, which is like, um, it's like a kind of spiritual sounding ad hominem kind of attack on anybody who, you know, uses their brain and yeah. compares what's being taught with the Bible. Oh, you're a religious, you've got a religious spirit, you're a whatever, mm, you're a Pharisee, mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing. And, um, and actually it went as far as people being uh, sort of, practically expelled from the church wow um, cult like i don't know that many were actually told to leave um but but in many cases it was made um it was made very very uncomfortable for people so that they did leave mm. um and this is how actually cults really do formulate. See, this is what I'm saying. To, I said to people like, see, when we let little seeds of yeast or false teaching go and we think, oh, it's just a little bit of false. Is this a little bit of teaching which was a misinterpretation? Look at the information control. Look at the behavior control. Look at the way that, um, you know, there's a. There's a there's a there's a cultivating of of silence in this particular um ex in this particular example. You know, this is how churches, some churches, not all, some churches actually operate, and people believe they're in freedom area, and they're not. Because when you begin to twist scripture, you also begin to twist the behaviors of people because you want to make sure that you, that no one else can break the hold of your church. So you start to say things like, I'm gonna make disciples and you know, I'm gonna make sure we we tighten the grip. You know, make sure people can't talk against our church. Make sure people can't say they disagree. If your church is a church that says we can't disagree, and if you disagree, you've got a divisive spirit. Let me tell you something. That is not the church you want to be in. Because that is what we call a measure of abuse and control. Anyway, let me let him go on. And then they were, you know, they'd be talked about really, really very rudely um, behind their backs. Like, um, um, oh, you know, they had a, um, they, they had a, a spiritual whatever, you know, they had like a, a religious spirit, or they were yeah, a religious spirit. You know, they, yeah. they were they were they were here operating under under the spirit of Jezebel, yeah, and um, you know, um, whatever, you know, really, really good, really good, lovely people, 
you know, kind of driven from the church yeah. um, for, for questioning stuff and for trying to, you know, try to, try to persuade the pastors to actually come back to the Bible mm-hmm. in some cases, you know, um, and... Uh, well, it's interesting that um, I'm sure you're friends with her too, Holly Pivik, um, mm. the, the research, the NAR researcher who... Yeah. Bless her heart. She goes to Bethel. She goes to the different NAR churches, and she researches. Um, she's got a master's from Biola, I think, in apologetics. So she's she's really smart. And um, she has said in her books, and one of her books is God's Super Apostles, that in the New Apostolic Reformation atmosphere, the, the their organizational structure, the apostles are... I mean, they're like above the Bible in Mm, terms of who who you listen to, which is shocking. Right, right. And these are self-appointed apostles. These self-appointed don't have any more apostles. There's no. Yeah, yeah. According to the Bible, the 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 criteria for apostles cannot even be met today. Yeah, it's impossible. The whole thing is so prideful and controlling. It's just shocking. Yeah, and, and this is one of the things that, that I, um, again, it's things that I start, I started to realise towards the end of my time there, and then the sense I try to point out to people is, um, you know, if if you call someone an apostle, if you acknowledge Bill Johnson or whoever, John Arna, Cheyenne, whatever, um, is an apostle, then actually, if 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 you if you really believe that and you're really going to follow that through. You have to abide by what they say. You have to, or you, or you are disobeying God. Because if if you if you, if you ignore the words in this book, this is a Bible. Can you see that? <laughs> yeah, the Holy Bible. Uh huh. Yep. You you ignore the words in this, right? Written by the apostles and prophets. You are ignoring the words of God. Yeah. 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 So if you say that a man today is an apostle. You have to accept what he says, even if it's complete coswallop. Even if it contradicts scripture. Even if it completely contradicts scripture. And even if it, you know... Wow. This is dangerous it's, stuff, Oscar. It's, it's, it's mad. It's, it's really, really mad. Um, and... Um, and they, and they kind of just keep going down that rabbit hole of um, yeah. deception, don't they? And just get yeah. more and more delusional and more and more prideful it's, and... I mean, right. someone um, today... It's really interesting that they actually mentioned as well, um, uh, can we call someone an apostle today? Um, and actually, as, as I'm even doing the research, I realise many people are stating there ain't no such thing as apostles today. And the reason why is because apostle would have to see Jesus. So we're now going to have to start questioning whether there's even apostles in today's day and age. Do you get me? You know, when you see um, people saying that they're restoring the age of the prophets and their thingy, but how? If Jesus isn't, if Jesus isn't alive on the earth, I mean, you know, he would have to have been, I'm just wondering, ah, you know, uh, she, 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 um, yeah, I'm not sure, you know what I mean, um, I mean, the gift of it, not the office of it, I guess, but, um, yeah, I don't know. It's really mad. Um, but yeah, we got to be very careful if we have those who are calling themselves apostles. Um, you know, I, I would be very careful, um, uh, referring to anyone as an apostle and actually it's made me really think, um, to think about actually what does that actually mean how do we like, i've never questioned it why someone's called an apostle and if they what is the what is the definition of apostle i need to start i need to i need to read my bible this is what i'm saying guys we need to read our bibles because this will tell us the absolute truth but as they're talking it's making me really reconsider things and because i've been dealing with a certain church and they've been talking about apostles and prophets and the way their word is final we're gonna have to really break down some stuff put a video up of um Shean and bill johnson and Shean's like pretending that she's gandalf, gandalf yeah. from lord of the rings yeah. and like on a christian church sta- i mean supposedly a christian church stage and yeah i mean they're just going further down that rabbit hole we used to yeah. do things like that at my new age classes where we'd pretend that mm. someone was gandalf mm. and characters yeah. from lord of the rings it, 
I just, the, the lines between New Age and New Apostolic Reformation, are, they're just blurring more and more. It's just yeah, yeah. completely becoming a mind-body-spirit well, festival. It's, it's, like, it's like they're not even trying to hide it anymore. No. They're, well, yeah. I mean, one of Bill Johnson's books, or the one he endorsed... So guys, as you've heard, I'm going to leave it there. I want you guys to go away and I want you to read your Bibles. Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. And that's as simple as it is, yeah? Let's read our Bibles. Um, and let me set some homework for you guys. Let's study what is an apostle, because I'm about to study that, man. Real spirit, I'm about to study that. More love, appreciate you guys, stay locked, stay loaded.